All right, let's talk a little bit about pocket knives. I made a video a little while ago about uh, the function of a slip joint pocket knife, and I did it here on this rise and fall indicator, and you could see the relationship of the blade and the spring and how that works, but it's a little bit hard to follow. So I'm actually gonna do it now that I'm a little farther along with this knife. So deceptively simple. Your typical pocket knife, old school, and it's called a slip joint because it doesn't lock, right? It just folds, it just opens and stays there. And the way it does that is with spring tension. And people got confused when I said spring. So let me break down a pocket knife for you in its most simplest parts. You have the blade, right? Now right now, this is just the shape of a blade. I've cut it out, took drawing, I put the nail nick in there, and I've spent a lot of time getting the geometry on the tang correct. This is everything to how a pocket knife works. So let's talk about some things, because I'll use terminology in a little bit, and it might throw you. So let's just back up and uh, do the Sesame Street stuff in case you've never heard this before. So here you have the blade, of which I have not cut any bevels. It's just a piece of metal at this point that's been heat treated. And I'll come back and grind the bevels into this to make it an actual knife blade. So the blade, and then this part back here is called the tang. This is the pivot hole, right, where the pivot pin goes. And if you've ever wondered what this funny little doodad on the front of your pocket knife is right here, that's called the kick. And that little thing is extremely important. It, uh, it does a lot for you. So let's go over it. So there's the blade, and this is the spring here. And you say, well, that just looks like a chunk of metal. That doesn't look like a spring. And you're right. It's exactly the same steel is the knife blade. In fact, they were cut out of this very piece of steel here. I've got some blue layout fluid on here. That way I can trace out the shape that I want, drill it and all that kind of good stuff. Once I clean it up, you have this. And this is called the back spring. So the way that the back spring works, and the back spring is what makes the knife work as it were. So let's put the pins in it. Here's your pivot pin. And here's the blade. So, why do we need the back spring? Well, real simple. Without it, the blade just flops around, right? So this is how your knife works on the inside. So you've got the blade on a pivot, and we need something pushing down on the back of the tang to keep the blade up, you see that? When the, when the spring pushes down, the blade pops up. Now what is really important about a pocket knife like this is the blade tension, or not, excuse me, the uh, spring tension. And the way that's done is there's another hole back here. And if you notice, the pin won't go in because it doesn't line up to that hole exactly. Right, if it did, if I could just do this, and put the pin in there, there really wouldn't be any force and the blade would be all sloppy. So the way this knife works, in essence, is all about these two holes being offset. So to get that pin in this hole, this spring has to bend upward, right? It has to bend upward so that the holes will line up and the pin will go in, and once it does, it's held in place, right? Because what are we actually trying to do? We're trying to make downforce. We're trying to make downforce right here. So if I want to make downforce on the front, I can't really do that, can I? Because there's nothing here to push. So if I want this to go down, what does this have to do? It has to go up. So this hole is a little bit higher than this hole. And when I push this up and get the pin in it, it's gonna hold it in place. And then you actually have a spring. See that?
So, you're kind of wondering what's this cutout right here. All right, so, like I said, this is blade steel, and it gets heat treated and tempered just like the blade does, but it's a, it gets tempered to be a little bit softer than the blade because we want this to bend. And how much force it takes to close your knife, right, to open or close your knife. Have you ever had a pocket knife where you go to open it up and it's called a nail breaker? You just can't get the sucker out. That's because this spring has too much tension on it. So the way that we control that is we take this spring and we relieve a little bit of steel out of here to make this thickness a little thinner. See how thick it is up here? And it's thinner down here? It's because when I made this knife and I went to fit it together, it was a little too stiff. And I was afraid that um, repeated flexing of it with that much tension eventually it would break this spring. So we relieve a little bit of steel out of here and that tension comes out beautiful. And that's pretty much it. Now, you'll notice a couple other things. We talked about this kick, didn't we? Well, what's the point of it? And I addressed this in my other video, but if you haven't seen it, have you ever wondered, you're like, okay, here's my pocket knife. And when I go to close it and it goes, click, right, to close, is the edge in here coming in and is it going to hit the back spring right because if it does it would beat the edge off of the knife it would dull your blade well no it won't and here's why the kick can you see that the kick comes down and rests against the back spring so that's touching right now and it creates a gap all through here none of this can touch so when the blade comes down you hear that sound the only thing that's hitting is right here now if this had a pin in it it would be better because I could get my nasty hand out of the way but when the blade comes down that kick is what stops it it kicks into the back spring and this gap here is what keeps your edge from hitting anything and getting dull from damaging that edge, keeps you from damaging that edge. So you lift it up and this knife has a half stop. What's a half stop? Okay, so on some knives, it's the, it'll hold itself closed or it'll hold itself open. But in the middle here, well, it's just kind of anybody's guess. You ever had a knife close on you by accident? You're going to close it and the spring gets it and pulls it down on you well what this knife has is a half stop and if you can see that little gap in there that little gap means that it can only rest on two points of contact and anytime you have two points of contact instead of one you have stability let's look at that closer one shoulder and here's the other shoulder and this part has been dished out see that it's kind of like a little wishbone up top well if this was round you would get a really smooth action feels great but if it's just past center the spring wants to pop it open and if it's just past center closing the spring wants to close it this half stop gives you a little place it's going to click halfway in and halfway out just like this and then you'll push it again to close it pull it once it'll stay here pull it again it'll come to here and that's a really nice feature but uh, takes a lot of work to get that just right so slip joints right they look simple there's really not much to them but what makes them incredibly difficult to build to do well is getting all the dimensions right is getting this piece and this piece there's your two points of contact in the open position there's your two points in the closed 
and the closed is right here. Your kick in this part of the tang, and then your half stop is those two points of contact. And in each of those positions, the relationship of the back spring to the back of the knife, and this is rough, I haven't finished this at all, will be exactly the same. So when your knife is closed, you want that to be nice and flush, right? You don't want your spring, you don't want your spring sticking up. And then when it's ha in the half stop, it'll be flush again. And then when it's completely open, it'll be flush again. And in between, it's gonna come up a little bit. So you go to open it to half, open it to full, close it to half, right? That spring is gonna work like this. And you want it coming down to exactly the same spot in all three positions. And that's controlled by the tolerances here, the dimensions here. So here's your center, your pivot point. From the pivot pin to this contact point has to be exactly the same as from the pivot pin to this contact point and from the pivot pin to the plane created by these two contact points. So you spend a lot of time on these knives touching up that corner, touching up these corners, touching up that corner, and you go back and forth and back and forth until they are exactly the same when you operate the knife. So, you know, when you're making a pocket knife, you take this thing apart, good God, 500 times. Here's one, another one I'm working on that's just roughed out. So this is still in the hot, ugly mess stage. But as you can see, this one's gonna get a slightly different blade. The nail nick is up there. But same thing, right? Same basic components. And just so if you're wondering, that's kudu horn from Africa. And once that's polished out, well, this needs to be polished out, but this is just simply sanded. That's kind of what it's gonna look like there. So anyway, that's Pocket Knives 101. And uh, hope that answered your question. Thank you very much.